I recently decided to migrate all of my passwords over from LastPass into Bitwarden. And this isn't to say that LastPass is terrible. I think LastPass is great. I've been using it for the past, I don't know, two or three years now, and I've had pretty much no problems with it. But I decided to move over, and that's for a very good reason. So they're both online password managers. They are both fairly similar in the way of features, and pretty much they're fairly similar like all round, except for one thing, and that is the fact that LastPass is closed source, and Bitwarden is open source. Now the benefit of having an open source password manager, or really just anything security related that's open source, is the fact that you can have external agencies very, very easily security audit it. Whereas if it's something that's closed source, you kind of have to rely on the company actually auditing their own code, and then actually telling you there's a problem. So if there's say a security vulnerability, which LastPass has had plenty of times before, you kind of have to wait until they actually tell you that that's there, or someone manages to discover it themselves and is actually going to tell people. Whereas with something that's open source, you don't have the same sort of problem because anyone can go and order the code themselves. Now, what I wanted to show you today is just how to migrate your passwords over from LastPass into Bitwarden. Now, it's not a very complicated process, but I thought I would document it here just because it's not directly shown in the actual Bitwarden app or the Bitwarden extension. So, first up, what you're going to want to do is actually make yourself a Bitwarden account. Now, you can do this just on their website. It's a very simple process. So, just click the Create Account button and give it an email address, a username, and then your master password. Now, with this master password, you're going to want to be very, very careful with it because, as it says right here, there is no way to recover the password. And also, don't set something that's really easy to crack. Don't set password. Don't set your mother's maiden name. Don't set anything like that. That is a horrendous idea. You're just asking to get your password vault broken into. Now, what I typically do for setting this master password is set a long passphrase. Now, this differs from a randomly generated password in the way that a passphrase is basically you take a bunch of words, I typically do something like four to six words, and then you just stick them together. Now the benefit of doing a passphrase over a randomly generated password is that a randomly generated password is really difficult to remember. You're not going to remember something like, I don't know, let's just type up a bunch of random characters. So this, you will not remember this. I don't care who you are, you will not remember this password. It's a really strong password, but you won't remember it. So if you did something like a passphrase, which would be something like, I don't know, chicken, uh, donkey, tree, fridge, uh, terminal, I don't know, friend. Something like this. So this is a much longer password, but because they're all words that you know, it's going to be much easier to remember this. So instead of whatever that jumble of characters I had before was, you can say, okay, my password is chicken, donkey, tree, fridge, terminal, friend. And if you want to make it even stronger, what you could do is just chuck some numbers in here or chuck some symbols in here. If you want to kind of just completely break how an attack would work, don't replace the eyes with like ones, replace them with question marks or with at symbols. And at that point, you've got a password that would be completely impossible to crack in the current year. Now, I'm not going to say it won't be crackable in the future. It could be cracked in the future. Right now, though, something like this, unless you're someone like Bill Gates, no one's going to bother trying to crack this for you. Now, if you want to make it even worse, just stick a random other language in there. So just, I don't know, stick some Spanish in there or anything else. Just keeping it on English is fine for something this long. But if you just want to make it even worse, just stick some Spanish in there, stick some Chinese in there, and nobody is cracking that password today. And the reason for that is even if you're trying to do a dictionary attack, the number of permutations that this has is completely infeasible for modern computers. Now, don't set this specific password because this specific password will now be in those password crackers. So don't use this, use something else, but you kind of get the point. So just go and make your account on Bitwarden and then we can go to the next step. So from this point, what you're going to want to do is go into your LastPass vault. So I'm going to be censoring a lot of stuff here so you don't see anything that you shouldn't see. And what you're going to do is go into your vault right here. Obviously, you could go to the actual LastPass online vault. I'm just going to do it through the extension. It works pretty much the same way. Now, what you're going to want to do is go down to more options, then go into advanced and then click on export right here. And then you're going to have to put in your LastPass password. Once you've done that, it'll bring up a little prompt to actually download the actual password. So we're just going to save that 
and go ahead to the next step. Now, do not show this file to anyone because if you go have a look at the file right now, what it is, is a plain text version of all of your passwords. So do not show anyone this. It's a very bad idea to show this. Delete it as soon as you don't need it. Yeah, basically, just don't let anyone see this file. So what you're going to want to do now is go over to the Bitwarden vault. Now, I don't believe there's a way to get to that through the actual Bitwarden extension. So what you're going to have to do is actually go download the Bitwarden app or do it through the online vault. I'm just going to do it through the online vault just because that's a bit easier for me. So if you're doing it like me, just come over to the Bitwarden website and then just go to the login button up here. And then basically just put in your password and we can get into the vault. As you can see on my screen, I've already imported everything to make sure it's going to work. But what you're going to want to do is go up to the tools option up here and then go to import data and then select what you're actually importing from. So if you're importing from like, I don't know, the Chrome passwords or Firefox passwords, don't store your passwords in Chrome or Firefox. That's just a bad idea. You can also import those as well. You could also import things like keypass2, one password, dash line, or a bunch of other stuff that is in here as well. We're just going to select the last pass option though, and then basically just choose that file that you downloaded just before. So that'll be this one right here. So last pass underscore export. And then what you're going to want to do is just click import data here. Now I'm not going to do that because I think it'll try to double up on all of my passwords because it is the exact same file. I don't know if it'll try to filter stuff out. I haven't actually tried it. So I'm not going to click the import button. There is one other thing you might want to do though. So if we just go over to this link right here, the one thing that it doesn't import is form fields. Now I don't typically use the LastPass form field stuff, so I never bothered to do this. But basically what you're going to do is just go up to the LastPass extension thing, go to export form fields, and it's the exact same process we just did. So put in your master password, download the CSV, come back here and then just dump the file in here and import it. It should work perfectly fine. Now, with the passwords, if they don't work, there is a commonly known problem with LastPass, and that is this right here. Sometimes it might try to do HTML encoding on some of the symbols. Don't know why. It sometimes tries to do that with the LastPass web extension, though. So if that's a problem, you can go and download the LastPass Pocket application. I don't know if this is out of date because I didn't have any problems whatsoever and I have ampersands and I have greater than and less than signs in some of my passwords. So I haven't run into the problem. If you do though, it is a known problem and you can try this fix out right here. So if all of your passwords are completely moved over, there's no problems whatsoever, what we can do now is we can go and delete our LastPass account. So to do this, what you're going to want to do is just search for delete LastPass and if you've already logged in through the web vault, it should automatically keep your account plugged in. And then what you're going to want to do is click this button right here. Now I'm not going to do it on camera. I'll do it after I finish the video just, need, just in case I need to do any re-recordings. But once you've done this, your account will be completely gone. So there's no going back from this point. Make sure everything is on the new account because if it's not, you're going to be completely stuck. So if you're done with everything, go ahead and delete the account and you'll be completely moved over to Bitwarden. At this point, if you haven't done so already, I would recommend going back to the Bitwarden website and downloading, say, like one of the extensions or one of the apps because using it through the web vault is completely fine. It's just not really that convenient. If you're going to do it through the web vault, you might as well just do something like pass. What you want to do an online password manager for is for the convenience. So go down on the website and you can see what is available. So if you're on Windows, Mac OS or Linux, there are desktop installations. That's pretty much everything. I don't know if there's like an ARM version. There could be. I don't know. No, there is not an... Okay, sadly, there's not an ARM version. That would be nice, but not an ARM version. If you want to just use it in your web browser, there are a bunch of extensions here. Three of these are the exact same. I don't... Actually, sorry. Four of these are the exact same. So we have Chrome, Vivaldi, Brave, and Edge. Do the exact same thing. Don't know why all of those buttons are there. Whatever. You could also get it for Safari, Firefox, Opera, or Tor Browser. Obviously, also anything that Firefox is based on. Not things like Pale Moon, just because Pale Moon is based on like the older version of Firefox extensions. But any of the stuff that uses the, uh, the new method. If you want to get the app, there is the iOS version or the Google Play version. Or there is also a command line tool you can use. So that's available on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, NPM, Chocolatey, whatever this one is. And Snap. I think that's Snap. Yeah. So 
Feel free to use Bitwarden however you want to use it. Personally, I like using it through the extension. And I also typically will download the Android app as well, just so I can use it on my phone. If I just wanted to use it on this computer and nowhere else, I wouldn't be using an online password manager. I'd be using something more like Pass. Because if you don't need cross-device passwords, there is no reason to use an online password manager. You should just be doing something that's local to your system. I might do a second video on things like how a online password manager can be secure, uh, the features of Bitwarden, things like this, and also why, I guess, open source security-based software is a really, really good idea. All of those could be fun videos. We'll see, I guess, what you guys think, and also if I decide to make them. So I think that's everything for this, but before I go, I just want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Peter Lee, Road, Tony Donald, Q, Larry, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or just anything else you want to go to small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech Over Tea, available on Library, and also on YouTube for the video version, and also basically anywhere you can listen to podcasts for the audio version. Also remember to go check out this channel on Library as well, we will be at nearly 7k subs today, I reckon? Yeah, so this one's actually going out the day I'm recording it, which is impressive for me, usually I don't do that. But I feel like doing something like this and then just uploading it straight away. Anyway, remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.